Okay, we have this book, okay, your latest authors. It's called Marriage is Easy as ABC, right? Whereby we use the letters of the alphabet to explain what marriage is for us mm -hmm. and what marriage could be. And we talk about a lot of the things that we have talked about, you know, tonight in terms of commitment, mm -hmm. in terms of understanding, communication, and all of that. How in marriage these things will change, but yeah. you have to constantly look for avenues yeah. to be able to renew, to be able to continue. Okay, so right. this book is going to be out next week on the 20th of November. Okay, a lot of pre-orders have been out and we have started shipping those out. So feel free to please go to the website and pre-order at iokbeddavis.com and also on Amazon to get your copy of the book. Okay, this book will bless you. So the next question we want to ask is that, what has been your toughest season, right? In your marriage of 14 years okay because we're talking about overcoming the battle in the mind mm. even when life hurts so what has been mm. like your toughest season that challenging time or period for you and how did you go about overcoming this mm. you know we want to know we want you to share with us so that people can know because the truth will set people free mm -hmm. so please uh, how long do you guys have because um our 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 toughest seasons, I don't know, they are competing for competition. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. So you're saying there's many... Oh, man, Just... I, can, I can give you countless stories. I don't know which is the top. But, but, anyway. but, okay. but look look at the fact that you guys are even still smiling. So I'm oh, yeah. I'm already, like, I'm inspired because you guys are still smiling. You're well, laughing. A, a, well, not tough season, but yeah. Anyway, let me, let me allow you to talk. You go. Okay. Um. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to start off by saying that um, because I've started blogging. Um, mm, okay. So what's the name of your blog so that everyone can can um, follow on and check it out? In AnnabelleAaron.com. No, no, that's your... Yeah, well, go... What's your stuff? What's your Instagram? They'll find on your Instagram. I am Annabelle I am Aaron. Annabelle Aaron, yeah. Okay. I am Annabelle Aaron. <clears throat> I am Annabelle Aaron. Okay. I am Annabelle Aaron on Instagram, right? Yep, I believe okay. so. Okay, so yeah. guys, go to I am Annabelle Aaron on Instagram, okay? Um, so the toughest season is still a tough season, if that oh, makes wow. sense. Wow. So, and I'll explain. Um, so on the 1st of April, 2010, um, I had a brain aneurysm. So a brain aneurysm, for anyone that doesn't know, is where a, um, a vessel in the brain bursts and bleeds. So one of the vessels in my brain bled. Um, sorry, one of the vessels, yeah, one of the vessels in my brain bled um, and was bleeding for I don't know how many hours. It could maybe it's 13, 14, I don't know. But basically from around two o'clock in the afternoon to about midnight um blood was bleeding on my um on my brain wow. um and it affected my memory Ooh. um and they they said that it affected my short-term memory i say they but it did affect my short-term memory um because i could remember my parents when they came and vi visited I, I could remember things um but i couldn't it affected my short-term memory hmm. Um, and short term was pretty much immediate to almost five years. I, and I kind of calculated it myself. So just an example would be Aaron would come and visit me when I was in hospital and he would go, to, he could go to the gents, he could go and talk to the doctors and he would come back and I would greet him like I'd seen him for the first time that day. Wow. Mm. Wow. Wow. So, wow. so it's almost life in what's, what's that term? Um, oh, I've forgotten what it's called. Um, but basically, it was almost like li living a life in repeat, like all, mm. the, all the time. Groundhog Day. Uh, Groundhog Day, that's what I was trying to remember. Yeah. So th this happened in 2010. And um, <clears throat> until today, there's I've increased, improved significantly. That's you ca can't really compare how I was then to how I am now. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm rebuilding myself up. I'm rediscovering myself. Um, I'm rediscovering my voice. Mm. Um, and the reason I say that is because, um, and it's the more that I'm reading and studying um, about the brain, the brain, your memory is what people remember you by. Yeah. So it, it's, it's how, it's what people define you by. Um, so the fact that 
there's almost like a question mark over my own memory. Mm -hmm. And when I thought about it, I was just thinking, so who am I? Mm. Um, how are people, how, how do people um, describe me or can they even rely on me? Um, because as quickly as I would say something and commit to something, I would forget. Mm. Mm. And for some, it could, that could leave a bitter taste in their mouth because, yeah, but I just told you that. <coughs> I relied on you. Mm. Yet it would seem like, um, I, not on purpose, but I didn't follow through on the things that I said. Mm -hmm. And I would say it very confidently, very articulately, um, but in terms of following it through, I would, it, it's just something that wouldn't, I just wouldn't remember unless it's being triggered. So it's still something that we're going through. Um, it's still something that I'm building on. <clears throat> um, but I think it's just one of those in terms of the, from a marriage perspective, um, I feel like even for Aaron, um, he's had to deal with a lot. Mm. And um, so when you say in sickness and in health, that's where that side of it really does yeah. play a huge part. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's elements of the vows that have been tested. Mm. So the words <coughs> of the, those words mm -hmm. have more meaning for me, let me say, because You've lived it because the, because yeah. because they. It's they, our reality. It's our reality. See, yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's um, you done. I could go on, but go on. Okay, so that's um, so even just what we've done is part of our coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. I have to train myself not to interrupt her. Mm. Wow. Mm. Because if I interrupt mm. her, she may forget what she's trying to say. Yeah. Mm. So mm -hmm. that's that's all part of part of the working. Wow. So if you notice, you would notice yes. that. Yes. That. <laughs> yes. So now that you say it, yeah. It's... Because normally I know um, um Aaron interrupts a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. you interrupt a lot. So but now it makes sense, right? It yeah. Makes sense. It makes sense. My wife with my wife on, I I I have to play down my interruption as much mm -hmm. as possible mm. so that she can speak. So and finish if it, and finish and finish. And if you notice with our pattern, I tend to wait for her to speak first. Yeah. Because if I speak, I can take the thoughts in a whole different kind direction that yes. may not be what she's trying to say. Yeah. So April 1st, 2010, mm -hmm. uh, my wife was working in Manchester that period. This was <clears throat> this was the the what's it called? The um um resurrection week. It was Easter week. It was okay. Easter week. Um, so I was I was doing a lot of I was working in properties then and trying to do business. <clears throat> and my wife was working up in Manchester. So she would drive up to Manchester on a Monday and come back on the Thursday. Mm. And I was supposed to go up to Manchester, to Liverpool on Thursday mm -hmm. um, to go look at a property. And I begged her to come back home on Wednesday um, so that I could drive up with a friend of mine on Thursday. And mm. she came. So um, we eventually we're having um, a devotion that morning. And so you're going to learn a lot from this story. We're having devotion that morning and devotion mm -hmm. ended up in a quarrel. Wow. wow. You know, I, uh, I, uh, the master this marriage team from birth, you know. We, <laughs> we um, if you if you if you have a hard call like me in marriage, I mean you have to give Annabelle accolades. Everybody, you if you if you want a good example of a wife, um Okwe is one, Annabelle is one. For oh. Annabelle to be married to me, wow, is um <laughs> It's an award. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's, it's wow. A, it's an award on its own. Um, um, there are times when my conversations with Annabelle is, hey, babe, we're about to fight. They will start fighting. And then I would have let her. <laughs> I would have let her ahead of time that I want to fight. Because actually, the very first day, the very first day I ever saw my wife annoyed, I could have thrown a party. I was like, eh, you mean you can get angry? <laughs> I've been pushing this lady from when we were dating. I was just looking for, just get angry. <laughs> um, this was the days of Blackberry Board and Blackberry Curve. So follow mm. the story. Yeah. Mm. We to get an upgrade, Blackberry Board and Blackberry Curve. That's what we're to be given. So I said, well, I'm going to pick up the phones. I'm the head of the house. So I'm going to get Blackberry Board. You will take Blackberry Curve. You're and right. You're right, sir. You're right. right. <laughs> You're right. 
What does that happen in your house? <laughs> well, let, anyway, let, 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 let's not talk. No, it doesn't because I'm using a Samsung Note 9. She's using Note 10. So. But yours is bigger and bolder. So, and yes, <laughs> Let's carry on. <laughs> so she goes, she goes, why should I get the better phone? I said, but I'm the head of the house. Why should I get the better phone? Yeah, why should I be the one to oh, get a better phone? Yeah. I said, but I'm the head of the house. I said, no, what happened to preferring me before? I'm like, <laughs> I love the way you guys are even using scripture. <laughs> to, you're trying to use scripture to even back it up. <laughs> and it was devotion. I'm like, ah, that scripture does not follow phone now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I stepped out of the house, went to car phone warehouse then to go pick up the phones. And this particular day, I just felt like a really good Christian. So people in the UK, this is not Nigeria, this is not Lagos. People were actually shunting in front of me. And I'm like, oh, go ahead. Go, <laughs> go, go ahead. People, I, I was just, I didn't know. Later did I know something was going on in my house. Wow. So one hour, eventually I got home. And then I saw the police and the ambulance trying to break into my house. Wow. So I got in and I said, what's going on? And they said, somebody had called. Now, when I left the house, my wife, I'm going to give you really a brief version. Um, so guys, follow me and um, get my music or something. You'll find it. So someone had called. So when I left her, my wife was on a conference call at work. Mm -hmm. so she was lying on the floor. I know where she was, but somehow somebody had called and I'll tell you what had happened. So I rushed in. I saw the ambulance. I saw the police. So I opened the door. What's going on? He said mm -hmm. somebody had called. So I opened the door. And when I went up, I saw my wife lying down on the floor. So the ambulance service walked in. They walked in. They lifted her up. And I just thought, Really? You're such a big cry, baby. Because of phone, you're upset. Wow. <laughs> Seriously? So she oh was, my God. was lying down Guys, on the floor. I hope you're listening. I hope you're listening. lying down on the floor, not saying anything, mm -hmm. really. So they lifted her up. They put her on the bed. And she wasn't saying anything. So they asked us, have you had a quarrel? I said, not, not, not seriously. So they checked, they checked their house to find out, did we have, did we take any drugs? Wow. Like so they started searching the house, went to a drug cabinet because she, she was just looking at us, but wasn't saying anything. Wow. So just, I was conscious, but unconscious at the same time. Yeah, yes. Wow. Typically, when you say somebody's unconscious, they're normally sleeping and yes. not moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she was awake wow. and just looking. So I'm, I was just there. I said, when, when, when we're done with this story, mate, we'll settle this thing. Seriously, just because of your food, uh, you're acting like this. So I was still my playful self thinking this mm -hmm. is serious. All of a sudden, when they said they were going to strap her and take her to the car, that's when it hit me. This is not a, into the ambulance, this is no longer a joke. Something actually is going on. Can mm. I beg men? Men, be prayerful. I know, mm. I know we have this thing where we leave our women to pray and all that. Men, better be the person that's praying. Mm. Now, the day before, I had attended the service. And I remember telling a friend of mine, one of my mentees, and I said, I said, something is coming. I sensed it in my spirit. I said, something is coming. Mm. And I said, whatever that thing that is coming, I'm going to stand my ground. Mm. That was what I said. I said, something is coming. I actually went to a different service in another church. And mm -hmm. I just sensed that something was coming. And because I'm the artist, I'm the guy on the road and things like that, I just generally felt it would be me, mm. not necessarily my wife, you know. So I'm I'm praying, I'm speaking in tongues, I'm sensitive. I didn't think that the devil would be hitting my wife. So I was ready. I was spiritually ready for whatever is coming. Mm. And guess what? This was April Fool's Day. April Ooh, Fool's Day. Yes. I'm texting all my friends. And I'm saying to guys, I don't know what's going on with Annabelle. Guys, I need help. Everybody will type back, April Fool, April Fool, April Fool. Wow, so can you imagine? Yeah, as far as even I had a pastor friend who was like 10 minutes away from my house. The wife told him over the phone while I was talking, don't mind him, everyone is in April Fool. Wow. Um, yeah, so everybody, as far as everyone was concerned, I was doing, it was it was Aaron again um, playing this big trick, <laughs> April <laughs> Fool. So nobody's calling me back, nobody's responding. But one of my friends, sent something he sent a text he said stand your ground sir when i got that text something triggered a remembrance of what i had said the day before mm. and i switched okay. i knew in my spirit straight away that i was in a battle mm. so in that moment i allowed them to take my wife i picked up the phone i called my mom i said mom your daughter is not saying that's my mom i said mom your daughter is not saying anything to me that's mm. how i described it she said, put the phone on her ears. I put the phone on her ears. My mom finished praying. I called my pastor's wife, who's very close to her, to pray. And then I said, I said, we're going to the hospital. So I drove behind them, got to the hospital, possibly another two hours. Nobody came. Then eventually my pastor, my ex-pastor, my pastor, who she was talking about, and the wife, the pastor came. Mm -hmm. um, I was still so sure we're going home. I wasn't, 
I had no clue what was going on. Mm -hmm. But wow. what had happened was when we got to the hospital, they've seen this situation so many times. So they were waiting for her to die. Mm. They were so sure that mm. she was going to die. Wow. Everybody, if you go Google aneurysm, 97% of people who have an aneurysm don't make it. Yes. Yeah. So this is me feeling spiritual. I'm in the hospital. I'm speaking in tongues pacing everywhere and speaking in tongues and they walked up to me and told me that hey if you continue speaking in tongues we can't help your wife wow right? that's what they told me in the hospital here if you continue speaking in tongues we can't help your wife wow. so i told them i said look what i'm doing is the very thing that would help my wife mm -hmm. so guess what <laughs> guess what they kicked me out of the hospital my <gasps> wife is in the hospital they got security to kick me out of the hospital so i'm outside speaking in tongues and just being so this was 12 o'clock we got to the hospital eventually around 8 p.m <clears throat> giving you really a brief version around 8 p.m they did a scan and that's when they found out she had been bleeding in the brain all the while so everything started happening fast they called me to the room they said this is the situation you're this and this and that, 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 that. so they stopped her working by herself and started trying to give her oxygen and everything because all this while she should not have been trying to do anything mm -hmm. by herself Mm. So at this point, I called another mentor of mine, Pastor Tyro Dukoy. I said, this is the situation. He prayed. And then I said, let's go. So he started looking for a hospital in London. I stay on the outskirts of London. Started looking for a hospital in London. They couldn't find quick, quick versions. Eventually, we got to a hospital in London at 12 midnight. And I remember. So how, long, how long had it been now? 12 um, hours. She had bled. 12 hours. 12 hours. Wow. She had bled for 12 hours. So eventually, we got to the hospital at 12 midnight. My friends now started maybe believing something is really wrong. Because it was the next day now. On. It was no longer April Fool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't really reach around what's going on. I blanked everybody. I remember getting into the hospital. And uh, the doctor walked up to me and said to me, are you Mr. Aaron? I said, yes. He said, um, I've seen the scans. I've seen the pictures. Your wife, Annabelle, would die imminently. That was his words. Your wife, Annabelle, would die imminently. I said to him, I said, sir, you do what you know how to do. We will do what we know how to do. And I stepped out of the hall. I said, go ahead and do what you need to do. So at this time, I walked out and I saw some of my friends coming in. Everybody was speaking in tongues and praying and all that. And I just stepped in the foyer. I'm an artist and I just sang. And I can tell you the songs I sang, but that's another day. I sang, we lift your name high. I just started singing and I watched it for about one and a half hours. And then they called me and said to me, hey, after one and a half hours, they called me and said to me, um, the operation has been successful, um, but your wife is not out of the woods yet. She's going to be a vegetable. She's going to have stroke, um, this and this and that, that, that. They said all kinds of things. Um, I was on adrenaline. I was on what you call the Holy Ghost adrenaline. You know, so you're I'm sorry, can I just um, ask a question there? So at this point where they were giving you this, all of this, you know, bad news for want of a better word. What what were you thinking? No, the bad news hasn't point... come. Bad news hasn't even come then. Wow. They just told us that she's out of the so you know somebody's gone had an operation. So you know, mm. okay, fine. So bad news hadn't come. That wasn't the reality of the bad news. So as far as I'm concerned, she's fine, she's had an operation. So I went home. <laughs> I went home that night, told everybody, hey guys, go home. She's gonna be fine. She's gonna be all right. Just mm. because I've always been the guy who's strong for everybody. So I, I was still in my character of everything is gonna be fine. So I went home. And guys, if you're listening, if you're a Christian, there is something called about words, the power of words. And I went home and I went into the scripture and I took out an A4 sheet and I started writing every scripture God had given me concerning my wife and marriage. Mm -hmm. I put it on a sheet of paper. I can still share it with as many people I share with people around the world who are going through sickness such type of sickness mm -hmm. and i called it annabelle's confession it was mm -hmm. an a4 sheet of paper i had every scripture god had given me concerning my wife and every scripture about my wife i just put it in there that was it mm. feeling like a bad boy christian child of god um um child of a minister the word of god works you know nothing the devil can't touch us the devil picked the wrong battle proud and all that called my prayer partner i said we're going to the hospital I remember taking, let's say this is the A4 sheet of paper. So I walked into ICU with that boldness, with the paper. When I saw my wife, when that paper dropped from my hand, wow. <laughs> wow. I had no clue where the paper dropped from my hand because I couldn't recognize her. Literally could wow. not recognize her. She had all these things all around over her face, covered and everything. And this was me supposed to be strong to come and speak in, to come and do whatever. And you know, my wife would just wake up like Lazarus. I would just go home, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. So I just ended up crying. I was just there crying and 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 singing and worshiping. And all of a sudden I got a tap on my back. Now I remember the first hospital I was kicked out. So I get a tap on my back and this nurse tapped me and says, whatever you're doing, keep doing. I said, why? So I was singing a song that says, um, 
Um, you are the pillar that holds my my life. Mm, yeah. I, that's what I was singing. I was singing under my breath, just really singing. And the mm. woman tapped me and said, whatever you're doing, just keep doing. I said, why? The woman said, the more you were singing, the more your wife was moving. She has not moved all night. Wow. wow. Glory to that God. moment, I raised my voice. I started singing. You are the pillar that holds her life. And the more I sang, my wife was becoming more violent. The more I sang, she was becoming more violent. Glory so after Glory a while, um, they said they needed to take, um, they, they said she was trying to take the air support. Mm -hmm. And they've been helping her breathe all night. <laughs> I'll end soon. They've been helping her breathe all night. So eventually I said, you know what? Take it off. Mm -hmm. I said, look, if we take this air support from your wife, your wife is gone. I said, but I can't say, because at the time it looked as if something was hooked to her tongue and it did look like she was going to pull it out. So I was worried about that really. No, nothing else. <clears throat> so they got the doctor. I said, yeah, take it off. They took it off. And that was the last time my wife needed air support. Wow. They took it off. Yeah. We moved from there to that same day. We moved from there to the world. Then the back to your question, the bad news came. Hmm. It came and told us that, look, fine, your wife made it, but now your wife is a vegetable because every information they were giving her, she wasn't retaining. So I walk into the room. She won't remember. She will ask, where are we? Are we in Ghana? Are we in Lagos? Wow. Are we? That was it. She couldn't remember my birth date. She couldn't remember anything. Now, this, this part of, she was in hospital for 43 days. Actually, no. It took 43 days to lick out the blood yeah. that bled in 12 hours. Wow. So my wife for 43 days had a tube just trying to lick out the blood to tell you how serious our body is. It wow. took 43 days just to lick out the blood before wow. they can even start any form of help <laughs> for her. They needed to get the blood out. But oh. anyway, hey, she's here. A brief version as always. I can mm -hmm. tell you so many other stories. But when you talk about, so people ask me, um, what was my mindset? In yes. that period, I just that's, believed God. But listen, I was going through a hell challenge in that period. I was going through a hell challenge. In fact, I was supposed to be going for an operation hmm. in that period. So I watched God help heal her. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking God, mom is small now. Just mm -hmm. <laughs> touch just this thing that heal me. Mm -hmm. So I was in the hospital every single day for 43 days in pain. Wow. In the pain of my own, <laughs> of my pain. own sickness. I can't leave that to go. I'll be looking for any hospital or anything. Mm -hmm. I lost properties in that period. I lost businesses. I lost everything because every single day I was in the hospital. I have tenants who were trashing properties. I had people who were calling me every single day I was in hospital. That then made me realize that a lot of all these things we're chasing is nothing. Hmm. Because in that moment, not the money, not the job, not the hmm. car, not the properties, none of that meant anything hmm. again. Hmm. There was she I wanted to go to Liverpool. I couldn't even go anywhere. Hmm. My life came to a grinding halt wow. for a whole year. You know, but I still had some crazy things. My wife went into hospital on Friday, on Thursday, Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, they were good. I was going to minister somewhere and the pastor called and said, you're not coming. I said, I'm coming. So I still went to minister on Friday. Um, on Sunday, I was ministering in church. I was not going to allow the devil to take my voice. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to, I guess the moral of that story is you have to believe I know what you really believe. Mm -hmm. And singles, if you're listening or whoever is, better know who you really married because there were times the prognosis was terrible. I remember the doctor telling me clearly, I remember the doctor telling me clearly, your wife will never have her memory back. And wow. I said to the doctor, I said, come, how dare you say that? And I went to my wife. I said, baby, who am I? And my wife said, my husband. I said, that's all you need mm -hmm. to know. If you know who your husband is, you're coming out. Exactly. I don't need you to know any other person's name. Yes, I don't know exactly. Yeah. But if you know, you don't need to remember because for them, they were giving her information and she wasn't retaining. Mm -hmm. I said, that's fine. But she knows who her husband is. If she knows who her husband is, then it's all right. We will, we will work it out. We will mm -hmm. figure it all out. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the end of the story was eventually... Um, how did she get out of hospital? Even though she'll probably be in the hospital till now. One day I told him, I said, give me my wife to take home. Hmm. I just I just walked up to them. I said, it's bank holiday. I'm tired of coming to the hospital every day. Give me my wife to take home. So we, we went through all that rancor and everything. I eventually took her home. And everything they told us could happen. Why? One, they said she will burn the house. Um, she can never drive again and all that kind of stuff. When I got into the house, husbands, well, husbands, don't go and do what I did. I'm radical. So let me just... Let me just put it there. I'm radical. If you know me, I'm crazy. <laughs> I drove past my house hmm. and my wife said, that's the way to the house. I said, really? For somebody who didn't have a memory. I said, are you sure? She said, yes. Wow. I said, okay, lead us home. And she led us home. I said, wow. all right. 
Now, they told us she must never drive. As soon as we got to the house, we didn't even get to the car. As soon as we got to the house, I said, baby, drive. Come and drive. And she sat down. Now, before you shoot me, I would explain why. My wife is one of the only women I know, or only human beings I know that drives automatic with two legs. I don't know how she do it. <laughs> if you know, I don't know. But my wife drives automatic with two legs. She will balance it normally. I've tried it many times. The car will feel like it wants to some assault. But she balances automatic with two legs. So I wanted to check if the balance was still there. Mm. And she drove normally. As soon as we got into the house, I said, babe, go and cook. Wow. So everything, everything. Not even rest. Not even no, rest no, no, no. after everything. Every, everything they said not to do, I did it immediately. Oh, I said, hey, God. God. I sat down in the in the lounge and I was watching her because they said she could burn the house if she cooks. Mm. So if, if if at least the house was going to burn, I can be watching where the house is burning from. Mm -hmm. so I, <laughs> I wow. sat down and I was watching. And she cooked normally and gave us food. I said, what's wrong with these people in the hospital? Are they all right? Mm -hmm. So she rested over the weekend. Now, before we left the hospital, um, she was scored three over 10 every single day for her memory. Three over 10. Wow. She wasn't retaining any information. By the mm. time I took her to hospital on Monday, they scored her seven, eight over 10. I said, wow. fine. Hospital is not working. Home is working. Give me my wife. That's how we got out of the hospital. Was just wow. Wow. You know, I've, I think I've heard this story. This is my third time hearing it. So from you at um, your worship concert, mm -hmm. then I've heard it from Ayo as well. Mm -hmm. And I've heard it this time as well. And it still gives me chills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though I know you, I've seen you, I've been in your house and watched you. Like it, it still gives me chills. Mm -hmm. Chills in the sense of God is just like, his mercy is unspeakable. Mm -hmm. Then also chills in the sense of, the way you guys handled it, like mm -hmm. for me, a lot of people would have just one accepted that the diag the diagnosis, mm -hmm. and two, and obviously not this. This is human beings. This idea that I don't think you ever once felt sorry for yourselves. Like why? All why right. So let me balance that because okay. it's important when we give testimonies uh -huh. to, give the, to give you the perspective. Mm -hmm. When after one two weeks. And it really did look like my wife may never have her memory. Do you know what it means to go in every time and your wife does not recognize yes. you? Every single time. Mm -hmm. I used to say, if you know me very well, I'm very, I'm, I believe in prayer walks. Mm -hmm. I literally used to go on prayer walks at night. And this was my prayer. God, maybe I made a mistake by praying this woman to life. Mm -hmm. So let me give you the reality check. Mm -hmm. So I started praying prayers like, God, if it was your desire that she should go, Maybe you can take her away. I apologize. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 that was my reality because, so back to your question of for better, for worse in sickness, mm -hmm. it hit me at that point. Mm -hmm. And if my wife is going to be vegetable, like they said, there's no runs from you. There's no side chick. There's mm -hmm. no other babe. This becomes my lot. All my purpose, yeah. all the things I teach, your goals, your vision, everything. All that is gone. My mm -hmm. goals, my vision at that point means I'll be dragging this woman around. Mm -hmm. So the reality of my life hits me. Yeah. That this is for real. This now mm -hmm. becomes my new purpose. That mm -hmm. my new purpose will be to take care of this woman till the day she eventually goes. Wow. And the reality of that was not sweet at all. So mm -hmm. at that point, I started trying to negotiate with God. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe, you know, we didn't have children then. So that was fantastic, right? So there was no children. So maybe, that, maybe, maybe I missed out on a divine plan by God, you know, and and just dragged this woman back on earth when God was. Mm -hmm. Those were the those were the contents of my prayer. Mm -hmm. No, many nights that was what I was praying. But when I showed up in the hospital, I was a bad guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when I go home, <laughs> that was maybe the doctors are right. Maybe the mm. doctors are right. But that's the reality of that. Do you think? Do you think just going on from what you were saying about? Um, having to show up, you know, as a, a bad guy. I think what we're trying to say, obviously, is, you know, just showing up as a strong man, isn't mm -hmm. it? But, you know, behind, you know, you also had, you know, to kind of cry behind the scenes. You also had to kind of feel like, oh my God, this weight is too much for me. Do you mm -hmm. think that that's something in terms of the responsibility of a man, like the man being like the protector, the man being like, okay, I am, I need to be strong for my family. Is that, is that, would you say that was why you were acting may, that way? May, maybe it came from there, but I'm not sure. Maybe it came from there. So if you know me very well, I'm the guy who's strong for everybody. Mm. I'm, I, 
I, I can be going through stuff, but the moment I see human beings, I'm a whole different beast. My wife doesn't understand that. You know, mm. I'm, I'm, that's me. The moment I come in, in with people, um, I'm, I'm different. I'm different. Mm -hmm. um, I think what had also helped is, guys, if you're listening, get to know God and get to know your Bible. I okay. think there was a strong conviction and confidence that I have in God. So I've seen my wife, I've seen my mom go through, we get to the hospital and the doctors are like, if you didn't come in, in the last one hour, you were dead. She didn't even know she was having a heart condition. Her heart was already gone. You know, I've seen, so I grew up watching those things. I've seen, I've seen armed robbers attack my mom in Lagos, in Shomalu, and my mom turn around and say, um, you can't shoot me in Jesus name. And then they wow. will shoot and nothing will happen. And they will shoot to the side, the, bu the bullets will crack. And then they will shoot my mom and nothing will happen. Um, so I, I grew up around faith and my mom would tell you that I'm the child who taught her faith. I was the child who didn't cry. I mm. came out, they, they had already packed me in a bag. And then after yeah. a while I sneezed and sh so it, there was a strong confidence. I, I had this confidence in God mm -hmm. that he was going to do something, how he was going to do it. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, that was it. I, and it's not, it wasn't even just a strong confidence in God. I had a strong confidence in the word of God. Mm. That's if, because so what used to happen those 43 days, the hospital said they can't have more than two people. I invited all my friends to the hospital. When you come to the hospital, I'll give you Annabelle's confession. I'll say, you go in there. You don't say, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, no. You go mm. there, you declare. Mm. And that's what everybody was doing. So I used to bring, I literally, my job in the hospital was I was arranging my friends two by two because the doc, the hospital said they don't want more than two. So mm -hmm. I'll make sure there are two people at any point. Mm -hmm. So I will feed people. I will give everybody, every food people are giving me, we'll eat it together in the hospital. Mm. I'll them in. You, you recite, you just come there. You, you speak the word of God, not even prayer. I'm mm -hmm. directing, this is what we are saying every single day. You speak the word of God, you pray, you don't do, you make her laugh and all mm -hmm. that, and you go. Mm -hmm. No, oh my God, is she going to do this? No yeah. crying, no nothing. So mm -hmm. I had this strong sense of confidence in the word oh, of God, in yeah, the I word of that. God. And, and let me just say that that the more of the word of God you know, the bolder you become. Yeah. Mm. You hear that? The more of the word of God you know, the bolder you become. Mm. So, and, and that's where it came from. Guys, please take note. Remember confidence in God. Remember what you're speaking, to speak life. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And you mentioned something there, you know, speaking those words of affirmation mm -hmm. and life. And in marriage, this is something that you would have to do on a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we've not even had anything close to, At you know, all. what Aaron and Annabelle have gone through. And, you know, this was only four years into, into their me. marriage. So this incident happened four years into the marriage. And by God's grace, 10 years after, here they are. Strong and Annabelle about. said something so very it's, key. It's important to add that. So a lot of people, just to give a perspective, let me yeah. introduce my wife to you. So you said this happened four years into the marriage. Mm -hmm. And I like what you guys said earlier on about the test and the different seasons. Mm -hmm. There were things that had happened before this time. Wow. So you will be tested in many ways. Mm -hmm. There were things that had happened before this time that mm -hmm. where my wife stood up for me. Mm. My marriage could have been done six months in marriage. Mm. Because of some little girl somewhere. Mm. Wow. Wow. Six months in the marriage. So because mm -hmm. what happens is when we tell this story, everybody sees me as the bad guy, mm. man of God. But mm -hmm. the real woman of God is this woman. <laughs> yeah. You understand? So mm -hmm. there were there were things. So when 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 people talk about for better or worse and da 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 da, mm -hmm. you're all going to be equally tested in different ways. I love that. Yeah, that's it. When it came to her health, but she had been tested with we have been tested with our finances mm. she have been tested when some little lady almost showed up and crashed our marriage within wow. six months of marriage mm. my wife stood for the marriage i love that do, 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 do you understand I so love you see, that. those from the first day we got married there were tests we don't have time to tell you all the stories i can mm -hmm. tell you about how my wife completely lost trust in me yeah. my wife wasn't the time to be checking your phone and all that those first four years were hell she was always mm. checking my phone she mm. was she didn't do, do, do you understand yeah. but yeah. we went through all that we went mm -hmm. through all that we god restored trust Mm -hmm. between us nothing mm -hmm. happened not that i slept with anybody or nothing mm -hmm. none of that happened yeah. but this situation was so much that it could have destroyed the marriage if yeah. my wife did not stand did not yeah. stand for yeah. us right that was one our yeah. finances i had made bad investments lost money all that kind of stuff in fact mm -hmm. at the time all that while my wife was the only person working 
at a particular time. She was the right. only one. She was the she was the breadwinner. She was I was trying to do businesses. Everything I did mm -hmm. was she was the only one working. When mm -hmm. we were in so much debt, she was the one to take her salary. She would take her salary and pay the lady who was causing trouble for me. Nobody knows how we were eating. Wow. She just made up her mind that this wow. lady was not going to have authority mm -hmm. over this marriage. So she had paid the price before my my own test. So you had to pay. I love exactly. that. Exactly. So everyone is mm -hmm. going to go through a test. So mm -hmm. you, have you made up your mind? You're going to be tested in marriage. You're going to be tested, be it money, be it um, yes. the loss of the flesh, be it health. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Whatever is thrown at us. I am going to be here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and and guys, and thank you so much once again. I, I just hope you guys are just I, are taking a lot from this because understand this, that the reason why a lot of marriages crash, the reason why a lot of people are in unhappy, unfulfilled or, you know, separation or whatever or divorce is because when some of these tests happen, right, somebody checks out, somebody says, listen, I can't do this any longer. But you need to understand that the test will come no matter how much you are praying. Do you understand? Like you would all go through a season. You will go through a tough time. You go through tests. Okay. But understand that, listen, we are in this together. Mm -hmm. It's not the time to say, I'm giving up on you. It's not the time to say, oh no, you are a mistake. Mm -hmm. The reason why people keep getting remarried and remarried is because they feel I married the wrong person. No, sir. You did not marry the wrong person. You're just going through that test, right? And eventually you will come out and you'll come out stronger and better. But at that point, you need each other. And how do you strengthen each other at that point is by, as my brother said, you know, your knowledge of the word of God, you know, your prayer life, you're praying together, you're worshiping together, you're growing together in God and building that confidence in God, what I like to call God-fidence together is what will take you through your tough times and tough seasons. Mm. Okay. So this is just a story that, you know, has been paraphrased and, you know, I'm sure that, and maybe another time in the future, we might, we might probably have to it's bring it back. It's still our story, but you may want to yeah. hear from her. So mm -hmm. if you have anything you want to add to that, because some of your, some of your, some of your followers are hating on me that this boy talks too much. So please they've not had, they've not had, because I, I was even gonna ask that because you know you said something about your coping mechanism before yeah so the way that you you try not to interrupt each other so like since 2010 how i know it's been 10 years now but how has the dynamics would you say question, of I'm your relationship mm -hmm. changed obviously yep. you had the four years before when everything was you know it wasn't it, yep. it was okay but then obviously this happened and this is to do beautiful question but she will start yeah they mm -hmm. say they say like your brain is what you are and you know you said something about who am i mm -hmm. so how how has it changed the dynamics of your relationship um well <laughs> it's where we are if i'm just being again totally honest um it's where we are and i think Actually, since the lockdown, so let me go there. I'll start from the lockdown. Since the lockdown, um, I've been, you can say that the lockdown forced me to confront myself. Mm. It forced me to realize and to accept that the acceptance that I thought that I had accepted about what happened in 2010, mm. I hadn't actually done that. Mm. I was just existing. Mm. Oh, that's just... 10 years after mm. Mm. but it mm. took the lockdown um to the physical almost like entrapment um and knowing that i had been locked up in my head mm. and then thinking about the combination of the two it scared me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i was thinking I, I honestly didn't know how I could, I didn't know how I could um, cope with being locked up for the last 10 years in my head and then physically being locked up under, uh, you know, by the whole um, pandemic. So, and that's how my, my blog birthed mm, mm. because I needed an outlet. I needed, mm. I needed a way of communicating. I needed, I needed something that, I could just talk and mm -hmm. share my thoughts without being interrupted. And I say that lovingly. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, as I said, I thought that I'd accepted it, but I hadn't accepted it. I just moved on. You moved yeah. on. There's no acknowledgement of it. And just recognizing, actually, you know what? 
this is what happened these are the implications of it mm -hmm. but i need to kind of accept it and like consciously accept it and then be able to move on mm -hmm. um so i think for me the the lockdown was a blessing in disguise yeah um and it forced me to to accept <clears throat> something i had assumed um Already. but it's also given me the freedom to yeah. develop and learn and grow um and yeah to learn more about myself mm -hmm. and to grow in areas that i have kind of let lay dormant if that makes sense mm -hmm. right cool so uh that's such a beautiful question beautiful question so the reality is my emotions towards my wife changed mm -hmm. so it wasn't easily the first four years after marriage it wasn't that of a loving relationship it wasn't that of a lover mm -hmm. my emotions towards my wife was more of a carer yeah i just want to see her well mm -hmm. so there was a an emotional disconnection and those are still things we're still working on till mm. now because mm. i am more protective of her my roles changed mm. it is i can't leave my wife to go out by herself because yes. she can drive away now and tell me she's driving to cambridge yeah she's lost somewhere do mm. you understand so mm. my emotions were all over the place it's mm. uh, if, if if she's going out on a night out with her friends mm -hmm. i almost have to give them information of how to take care of her and they will still not be able to mm. <laughs> do you understand wow. so i became the only person that knows her mm -hmm. i have to see her emails because if she goes some of some financial problems we had was a time when i was out of town my mm -hmm. accountant made her sign something and before you knew it Ooh. because they were not aware she went to yes. the meeting like she was fine yeah. before we knew it that signature was binding we were in over a hundred thousand pound debt wow. Just wow. Like that. so <laughs> so i need to almost mm -hmm. know what is going on mm -hmm. so that i can protect her mm -hmm. and protect us so that those were not things i signed up when i was married i was going to get married because as far as i was concerned mm -hmm. i was okay to be me she was going to fulfill all this bit so mm -hmm. i'm now having to walk double shift number one do what i need to do and be able to know what she's doing yeah right okay so she's talked about acceptance this acceptance she's talking about in 2010 there's been layers of acceptance all through the years there's yeah. sometimes where we think she got it but she didn't get it. So it's been layers. And even the acceptance where we are today is still a level of acceptance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it has to be walked through, you know. So we've we've gone through a lot. We've we've and then unfortunately in our situation, because I believe in canceling, guys. I believe in mm -hmm. canceling, I believe in speaking to people. But in our situation, we've not been able to find anybody who's been mm -hmm. through what we're talking about. So friends and everybody will come and tell us, oh, do this, do this, do this. Mm -hmm. Come into our shoes first, then mm -hmm. you will know what to be doing yes right so if you're telling us do this do this has your wife had an aneurysm before mm. and that thing you said do that it was just easy like that i mean my wife can be going up the stairs and forget what she went up the stairs for mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that is it yeah. so i have to be i have to remember i have to be able to feed her information to articulate for her so those the reality of that marriage became different so mm -hmm. it affected sex i know your people would like those kind of it affected sex it's not you know you don't you don't you don't have sex with somebody you care about like that like a carer because mm -hmm. in fact for me sex and things like that was you don't want to hurt her she's in pain yes mm -hmm. <laughs> do, do you understand she's in mm -hmm. pain it's mm -hmm. happened to her right mm -hmm. so you're now going to be thinking about your own needs and all that really are you are you really a man of god yeah i still be thinking about that kind of thing in in this kind of situation mm -hmm. <laughs> do you understand mm -hmm. so yeah. all that whole stuff affected us well we had two children in in that same same time because uh, i think um mr man had to help himself somehow and the children came but <laughs> 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 but but it really did affect it affected all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. anyway. but yeah and that dynamic is what we're constantly still working on we're constantly yeah. still we're growing together we're reading books we're looking right now we're blessed we have one of our friends who's 
who's taking it upon herself. Mm -hmm. um, every Saturday, um, we have a session with her. Mm -hmm. and, and and she would go get information from for us. So she's taking it upon, upon herself that she wants to figure this thing out. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's been the difference. We've gone for counseling. We've gone for people just tell us, people just tell us all kind of rubbish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but this particular friend has been doing loads of research. And from the research she's getting, she comes to us, shares with us, push us in that way. And it's been yeah. helping. Yeah. Wow. So, guys, if you're listening, if you're a doctor, if you're anything, we're, we're up for any form of help you can send that mm -hmm. way. We yeah. Will. Well, we'll take it and all that. Yeah, but that's that's how that's how it's been. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's 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 amazing because at the same time, whilst you're working on yourselves, your marriage, because of what happened in 2010, it doesn't take away from the fact that you're working on yourself and your marriage, yeah. if you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're learning new things about each other. You're learning how to communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. You're learning how to work with each other. And I'm sure that obviously none of us are perfect. You don't get it right all the time, but... Mm -hmm. I feel like you guys are you are learning you are mm -hmm. evaluating as you go along which mm -hmm. which is just yeah and and you know what amazing you know what if I'm being honest there's still a there's still a so when people hear this story they hear it happened to her mm. Mm, yeah but there's a there's an it happened to me version yes. that is still not in, as important even with me yeah. yes. Right? Um, yeah. when, when it kind of hit me was when we started, she started seeing a psychotherapist, right? And they asked the question, they said, were the kids here before the baby came? And we were like, no. The and, but, we, yeah, were the kids here before, I mean, were the kids here, here before what happened happened? Yes. And we were like, no. And the psychotherapist was like, do we know that that's one of the best things that's happened to us? And we're wow. like, why? They're like, because if the children have come before this happened, those children will be in trauma forever. Because wow. for them, the mom they knew before then, mm. they would be confused, mm. however how small they are. Mm. Because the picture of the mom they knew and the mom they would have known after that, they would never be able to marry it. Mm -hmm. wow. So for the kids, so sometimes when things are happening, you don't know what God is up. We could have been there saying we didn't have children and all that. Exactly. For the kids, for the kids it was good that they came after sure. because the mom they know is the mom they know. They know. From nine months, my daughter will go and help her mom keep her phone near the door, things like that, because they figured out, oh, mom may forget. That's the mom they know. Mm. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm. But when you think about that way, about it that way, then I now have to think. That means I'm probably still in trauma myself. Mm. And that's the reality mm -hmm. because I knew a wife before. That mm -hmm. wife yeah. has changed, I can tell you. Mm -hmm. That wife, the wife I knew before 2010, has changed. Mm -hmm. So we're in discovery to find out who my new wife is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And this, my new wife, is also in a discovery to find out who is she now. Mm -hmm. Now she needs to find out. That's why growth is important. She now needs to find out who is she now so that I can then find out how am I supposed to support this new person mm -hmm. for us to now understand what our new marriage is now yes. all about yes you understand? Yes. So mm -hmm. constantly working on it constantly working on it whatever yeah. version we have today is what we're working with mm -hmm. tomorrow that version will change mm -hmm. you wow thank you so much for sharing guys i think we're going to be wrapping up now and just to also let you know that aaron t aaron as i mentioned is a transformational coach okay yeah, and man. Yeah, man. If you if you need if you need to if you need to sort yourself out your mindset, go go sign. I don't know if there's a link, but send me a message in my DM. If you need a coach, I'm okay. the guy you need. I'm the I'm the I'm the best coach you should have had that you didn't know you didn't have. Uh, give them now you know. You if you need help, men especially. Mm -hmm. Let me speak to men. Women women are taking the lead in many things. Men, it's time to wake up. Mm. Man, it's time to wake up. I I feel so pained. I feel so pained because I've got a lot of ninety eight percent of my clients are women. Men, let's mm -hmm. talk. Men, get up. Let's talk to ourselves. Let's okay. be stronger men. Let's be better men. Yes. Let's be you know get into growth. Men, mm -hmm. it's time to study. It's time to read. It's time to get information. Tell them. It's time to share with people. We're leaving the women to do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Men. You know, men, if you need help, I, I I work with a lot of women. Women, I'm not saying don't come. Women, slide into my DM. Mm -hmm. My wife trusts me like that. It's okay. As long as you're not putting any pictures and things like that. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, you've heard it, okay? So please reach out, okay? 
But life that's an coaching, amazing question here. You want to to growth, me? okay? Aaron T. Aaron is the man. And obviously, I and Okwe are here for you, for your relationship coaching mm -hmm. and marriage coaching, okay? It is very important. I always say that everyone needs a coach for your different areas of life, okay? Yeah. So that we can all grow and, you know, fulfill our purpose and yeah. be everything God wants us to be. Okay. Can I, can I just say something about you guys quickly? Um, um, Ayo is someone I love so much, and by extension, I love Okwe. I think Okwe makes Ayo a, a nicer person, obviously. Um, <laughs> Ayo has been such a great mentee. He's been one of my coaching clients. Um, he's He's been men. This is somebody you can learn from. Ayo would come and take me out and sit me down two, three hours, questions, mm. learning, learning. He is a person who is... He would drive from his house. My house easily is about one and a half hours. One and a half hours. He would drive from his house and mm -hmm. come sit down with me. And he would ask me questions about marriage, about health, about finances. No holds back. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the picture of men. So they look, if you can't learn anything about if you're going to learn relationships, you're in good hands. Mm -hmm. Because um, he, he said something, a coach without, let me, let me say it. A coach without a coach is a cockroach. Mm. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> Ayo has a coach. Ayo works with, with people like me. He has a coach. So he's not a cockroach. All right? Okay, we just want to seize this opportunity to say thank you once again thank to you, Mr. Man. and Mrs. Aaron Aaron. If that makes sense. Mr. and Mrs. Aaron Mr. Aaron. <laughs> AA, Annabelle Aaron, Aaron T. Aaron. So. Um, it's, been, it's been amazing. Thank you so much, guys, thank for you. sharing yeah. so much, guys. your story, your journey. Every time I hear it, like, there's always, as Okoyemi said, you know, there's always something to take take away. Yeah. Anytime we sit to talk to you, there's always something to take away. So thank you for sharing.